Did you know that when your hair gets wet, the water temporarily breaks some of the bonds between the protein molecules in each strand? This means wet hair can stretch up to 30% more than normal. Wow! Ouch. Amazing people do lots of important jobs inside and outside hospitals that help to keep you safe. But what will happen when we have a go? I feel a bit silly. This is Operation Takeover. Can you guess who today's hero is? Well, I'll give you a clue. They might use some of these. They're a gardener. Nose on. You might find them using some of this. Oh, they're definitely a gardener. Nose on. OK, last clue. They often use this stuff. Are they the head gardener? Well, uh, I suppose they are in a way. Did you guess it? We're about to take over the job of today's hospital hero, volunteer hairdresser Andrew. He's the top stylist to the patients at the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London. Probably not many people think of hospitals as having hairdressers. Why do you need a hairdresser in a hospital? I just think a bit of normality in the midst of everything that they're going through is just so important. So getting a haircut, and some people have not had their hair washed for days or weeks or months, and the guys haven't had a shave, so not being able to do that must be so frustrating. One person in need of Andrew's services is 16-year-old Naila, who's desperate for a quick trim. I mean, the important thing for me is I want your hair to look great, but I want you to be comfortable as well. So are you OK to, to stand while I cut your hair? Yeah. Would that be all right? So, Naila, is it good that there's a hairdresser in the hospital? Oh, it's actually quite shocked, but it's, it's nice to have, you know, especially if you've been here for, like, a long time. Tell us a bit about the technique of what you're doing. OK, so I'm just cutting it, just getting all the dead ends off. I'm cutting a couple of inches off. And um, I'm just keeping it one length, just keeping it really neat and really classic and simple. A few more snips and nips later, and Naila's ready to go. Let's have a look. Just feels better as well. You look great when we arrived, thank but you, you do yeah. look even better Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> thank you. We've seen just how important and challenging the job of being a hospital hairdresser really is. That's right, Chris, and I am really looking forward to this challenge, but I'm a little worried we might not make the cut. Get it? Like the haircut, like the scissors. But... It's time for us to take over as hospital hairdressers. Andrew, what is our challenge today? I've got two volunteers who want their hair cut and styled. Are these uh, sort of dummies wearing wigs or are these real No, wigs? these are real people with real hair, so they will be a bit nervous about cutting too much off and they know how they like to wear their hair, so that's all part of the challenge. No pressure, then. Yikes! We're going to be judged on consultation, speaking to the client and asking what they want done, technique, how we cut and style the hair, and the presentation, the final look, and making sure the client is happy. Eek! Uh-oh! I feel slightly worried for our two very brave volunteers, Lizzie and Cassie. I'll go first. Watch and learn, Zand. OK, so show me how much you'd like taken off the end. Um, perhaps an inch or two? Like, now I'm trying to look as if I'm, like, really, like, weighing up the options and deciding what cut I'm going to give you, but actually, um, actually, I'm just stalling because I'm a bit nervous. Maybe you shouldn't have said he was nervous. That might not be the best thing to I'll say when a pair of scissors I'm in your hand. Fine. Consultation done. It's time to get snipping. There we go, the first cut. I think less is going to be more here, Lizzie. Oh, I'm just going to do a tiny bit more. Yeah. I'm not sure Andrew taught us the zigzag technique. As they say, it'll always grow back. I'd be worried too, Lizzie. What looks, when Andrew was doing it, like it would all go in a straight line. Even, even that, like if I go along here and I'm just taking the tiniest bit off, at the end of it, it's not a straight line and I don't see any way of getting it straighter. Hmm. I'm not sure I'm putting Cassie at ease. So, with a quick cut here and a chop-chop there, we're ready for the presentation. I didn't cut off any ears. There's no blood. The hair will grow back. I'm going to put down the scissors. Right, you spin around. OK. Grab the chair, hand you the mirror, and you can have a look. Just what I wanted. And this is the finished product. Crikey. I hope the jagged looks in fashion. Andrew, how do we do? OK, so I think... I mean, you're both fantastic, but I think initially, Chris, you started off amazing. Your consultation was great, Zand. I think you actually said at one point, I'm a bit nervous. I did. And that wasn't a good start. Wasn't what she wanted to hear. Yeah. 
However, I think Zanji, your technique was a little bit better than yours, Chris. You cut a straighter line, and with yours, Chris, you didn't use the client's back as a guideline. So what's the overall verdict? Well, I think the overall winner is it just really has to be Zand. Yes! Well, we may have learned that uh, you are a tiny bit better than me in some aspects of hairdressing. But what we've definitely seen is just how important the hospital hairdresser is in making patients feel good. This is most definitely a job best left to the professionals. Andrew, we're handing our aprons back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. We're both ouch and about. Chris is hitting the wards with his ouch bleeper. Apparently you've got a question for me. It's pretty cool, isn't it? And I'm hitting the streets to answer your medical mysteries. In the hospital, Chris is extremely busy doing his homework. I did it! Come on, jump to it. It's a message from Olivia. She's had an operation on her arm. Olivia, hi. Hi. Apparently you have a question for me. Yes. Why did they have to cut into my arm? What's the diagnosis, Doc? So it sounds to me like you have a case of, I want to know why they had to cut into my arm, Isis. You're out on a limb with this one. So tell me what happened. I fell out of bed and I broke my arm just above my elbow. What happened next? I had no pulse in my arm. So you didn't have a pulse in your wrist and that can be really serious. You have a big bone here connecting your shoulder to your elbow and that bone's called your humerus. And you have blood vessels running down your arm and then you can feel a pulse at the wrist. But if you break this bone, it can hurt the artery here and cut off the blood supply to the hand. So the surgeons fix the humerus, and then the blood can flow nicely down your arm, supplying all these muscles and the muscles of your hand. Well, I think you have earned an ouch sticker. OK, nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Meanwhile, I'm out on the street, hunting down quirky queries. <laughs> oh, hello, Matthew. Have you got a question for me? Um, why do muscles get tired when you're exercising? When you're exercising, your muscles use oxygen and a fuel source, which is usually sugar. So your muscles can get tired if they run out of oxygen or they run out of sugar. But if you're lifting a very heavy weight, you get other things building up in the muscles, like lactic acid, and they can hurt. So it depends on what kind of exercise you're doing. What sort of exercise do you normally do? Press-ups. All oh, right. How many can you do? Five. How many can you do? 200. Show me. I want to see this. <laughs> Great question, Matthew. <laughs> But you need to train your muscles a bit more, Zand. I'd like to see you do better, Chris. Sorry, I'm far too busy. I've got a call from Alfie. He's just had an operation to remove his appendix. Hi, Alfie. Hi. What is your question? How does your appendix work? What's the diagnosis, Doc? So it sounds to me like you have a case of I want to know how my appendix works, itis. Over to you, Chris. So, Alfie, you have a tube, and you have a tube as well that connects your mouth to your bottom. It's called your gut. And that gut digests food and then turns it into poo, which is the stuff you don't need. But dangling off a little bit of your gut is a finger-like dangly bit. And that is your appendix. And most people think it doesn't really do very much. It might store bacteria that help you digest your food, but you can live perfectly well without it. And we know that because in a lot of people, it has to be removed. Alfie, what happened to your appendix? It erupted. It erupted? Yeah. If the opening of the appendix into the tube of your bowel gets blocked, then it gets infected and then it can burst. Alfie, did I answer your question? Yeah. Great. Well, I think you have earned an operation out sticker. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Every year, Zand gets very excited about his role in our local play. And this year, he's playing the part of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. Why are you dressed as a witch? <laughs> anyway, every play can be full of danger. <laughs> if you don't have your evil fake teeth properly fitted, you could choke on them. Evil teeth? But these are my real teeth. <laughs> if your costume's too long, you could trip on it and bang your head. And no, my dress is tailor-made to my exact specifications. 
and you should always take regular breaks from practicing your lines because you wouldn't want to lose your voice before the big day. <laughs> okay, I think it is time you took a break, Sand. Oh, what a shame! We're just about to get to my favourite bit with the poisoned apples. Ooh, apples. I love apples. Wait, are these the poisoned apples? Yes! Oh no! Help me quickly! Injury alert! So what should you do if you think someone has swallowed something poisonous? A. Give them a cup of tea. That makes everything OK. B. Find out what they've swallowed, when and how much. Then call 999 and keep them calm. Or C. Turn them upside down and see if you can drain the poison out. The answer is B. Find out what they've swallowed, when and how much. Then call 999 and keep them calm. Let's see what this lot do without any advice at all. Are you ready? Yeah! Off we go. Mirabelle and Abid are both pretending that they've swallowed something poisonous. Quick, guys, they need your help. What's wrong? <laughs> she can't speak. Both teams get straight to work. What happened? Drink some water. Did not seem to react very well to the water. She's choking. She looks like she's very ill. We call 999. So they were correct to call 999 quite quickly, but they still haven't figured out what Mirabelle has eaten. And there's lots of poisonous stuff on that table. Good point, Chris. This lot didn't do quite the right thing in this situation. I think we should have picked it up quicker that the water was making it worse. That's right, Coria. Now it's time to show you how it should be done. Oh, oh! Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to get an adult. Oh, my tummy! Oh, my You're right, tummy. Chris. Oh, no, I feel really sick. My tummy hurts. I feel really ill. OK, have a seat. Hey. Have you eaten any of this? Yeah, I did. I ate one of these. I thought it was a sweet. This is a dishwasher tablet, Chris. This could be quite poisonous. Ooh. When did you eat it? About 20 minutes ago. So I'm going to call the ambulance and get you some help, OK? Thanks, Sand. I need an ambulance. I've got a guy here who's eaten one dishwasher tablet. He ate it about 20 minutes ago. Can I have some water? No, they say you shouldn't have any water. Should I make myself vomit? No, they say don't make yourself vomit. Just sit and stay calm and the ambulance is on its way. Are you all ready to have another go at it? Yeah! So, if you see someone who's swallowed something poisonous, you must... Find out what they've had, when and how much... What did you take? Call 999 and keep them calm. Don't panic. Remember, this is an exercise. You should never play with poisonous substances. That is fantastic. They've done it all correctly. Quick, Zahn, use my phone to call 999. What on earth for? Because I've eaten one of the poisoned apples. Those aren't poisoned apples. They're nice, normal apples that I'm using as props. Oh. Well, why didn't you just say so? Plays aren't dangerous. Now, I'm going over here to rehearse. Ah! 